Hey y'all, coming to you from the International Headquarters of Scotty DTV, but I was at the 2020 Pigeon Forge Rod Run and I came across a 1970 Camaro that I think y'all are going to like. You know I'm a big fan of the second gens and this is a cool one. Let me get the camera turned around we'll take a quick look at it. Randy, when you left the house, you knew. You knew if you shoot out, showed up with a second generation Camaro at the Dirty Dozen in Pigeon Forge, there's a good chance I would probably draw my, draw my attention. It's yes, kind of cheating. <laughs> it's kind of cheating to get on the Scotty D. I gotta let you know. You know, that's like laying down a piece of cake on somebody that's on a diet. You know, so no, what a beautiful car, brother. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, Scotty, this car has meant a lot to me all my life. This was a car that a friend of mine bought, brand new in '70. He kept the car for ever, and when he first got it back in the day, people didn't care about matching numbers. So he took the LT1 out. God only knows where it went. He put an LS7 in it, and he started just driving around doing a little street racing, nothing nothing bad. So, and being a friend of mine, he and I would tangle every now and then on the street where we should, or shouldn't, but yeah. we did. And uh, he spanked me every time I ever raced him. What were you running? I was running a 69 Z28 with a big block that I had put in it, and I still never could outrun this car. Those LSs are tough to keep up it with. It was Larry. tough. But anyway, he knew I wanted the car, and he never would sell it to me. And I sold every car I ever had. I would flip it, and somebody would come along with a little more money than I thought that it was worth, and it was theirs. But the day this man found it, he had cancer. He told me, he said, Randy, when I pass, I want you to have this car. He said, of course, obviously you're going to have to pay my wife, but I want right. you to have it. I know you've loved this car ever since I've owned it. And I said, I have. And his nickname was Dauber. His real name was Tommy Whitaker. Nobody ever knew his real name. Right. They just called him Dauber. So when I ended up with the car after he passed, I knew the car had to have a special place, so we did a, a rotisserer uh, type restoration on it we mini tubbed the car and as you can see what it is what it is after many hours still have the ls7 in it? no actually we took the ls7 out we put the small block three uh, 383 stroke or gm put it in and we changed the transmission it had a four speed and we put a tko five speed in it man what a beautiful car did you do the work yourself some of the work i did some of the work I can't claim. I've got some buddies that work for Childress Racing. They did the rear end setup. They did uh, a lot of the wiring on the car. I had a, uh, a, a good friend of mine help me with a lot of the engine work after we had had it tore down. We took a new GM Gen 4 383 stroker. He tore it down. He did a lot of neat stuff to it. Then we put it back in. Right on. And what, tire, what size tires and wheels does it run? That is a 20 by 12s on the back. Nice. And those are 18 by 7s on the front. And a lot of my, or a good close friend of mine helped me with the spacing because he is the guru of spacing. So he did all that for me as far as the math. What about suspension and all that? Did you upgrade all that? We sure did. There's a Heights front end under it's the Pro G. It's their show version, all the polished control arms. Then under the back is an Art Morrison, which again, a buddy of mine from uh, Childress Racing set up for me. We put the Spicer rear end from Winters rear ends. They set it up with 373 gear in the Detroit uh, locker. Awesome, man. What a beautiful car. Is there anything I'm missing about it? And it's just it's just such a passionate car that every time I look at it, I want to try to do something different. We did put a leather interior in it to mimic a vinyl interior. The lady that does a lot of my interior work, she sewed it precisely just like a factory OE. You have to look close to even see that it's I agree with changed. you 100%, and that's why I didn't really stop and do much on the interior because to me, I mean, it's all plus clean and fresh and new looking and yeah but it was all quality work and it does it looks like a stock interior and really this car again what do you have to do to a second gen Camaro get some nice wheels fix the stance and you're on your way yes that's, that's exactly all you gotta do right. to them. now if you want to yeah. paint them red and put black stripes on them and all this <laughs> other stuff I applaud you in doing that I support you but at the end of the day I'm a lover of these cars brother thanks so much for bringing it out thank you Scott and I want to thank you for your hard work and effort that you do every day and to just to broadcast this to all over the world, the United States, and 
to people that would never hear these stories if it weren't for you, Scotty, and thank you for your work. Brother, you are so welcome. It is absolutely a blessing for me to be in the position I'm in to be able to go and tell stories and show cool cars to the whole world. Thanks for bringing it out. Thank you for letting me. So there you go from the 2020 Pigeon Forge Rod Run, a 1970 Chevrolet Camaro Z28. Hope you all have enjoyed it. See ya! Make sure you subscribe to this channel and visit scottydtv.com for an easy way to search the hundreds of videos I have posted. Either click the link in the description or the one at the end of this video.